With over 19 million prescriptions last year, there has been a steady increase in the use of protein pump inhibitors since their introduction into the market. People with acid peptic disorders and gastroesophageal reflux diseases were once sentenced to a lifetime of antacid use and dietary restrictions. PPIs marked a positive change in the management of these disorders. Today we found out how these controversial drugs work and how effective they are. Proton pump inhibitors are amongst the 10 most commonly used drugs in Australia. Today we will find out how these drugs work and address some of the side effects that may occur from their long term use. We have spoken a lot about these protein pump inhibitors and you are probably wondering how these amazing drugs work. Well, our stomach normally produces acid to help with the digestion of food and to kill germs. This acid is corrosive so your body produces a natural mucus barrier which protects the lining of the stomach from being worn away. In some people, this barrier may have broken down, allowing the acid to damage the stomach, causing an ulcer. In others, there may be a problem with the muscular band at the top of the stomach that keeps the stomach tightly closed. This may allow the acid to escape and irritate the oesophagus. This is called acid reflux, which can cause heart heartburn and or inflammation of the oesophagus. PPI stops cells in the lining of the stomach producing too much acid. This can help to prevent ulcers from forming or assist the healing process. By decreasing the amount of acid, they can also help to reduce acid reflux related symptoms such as heartburn. They are called protein pump inhibitors because they work by blocking the final step in acid secretion, the protein pump, which is a membrane bound enzyme found in the parietal cells which line the stomach. The protein pump exchanges intracellular hydrogen ions for extracellular potassium ions with the help of the ATP. By binding to and blocking this enzyme, protein pump inhibitors can dramatically reduce the amount of hydrogen ions being released in the, into the stomach lumen and therefore decrease the acidity of the stomach. So, is the long-term use of protein pump inhibitors safe? While your PPIs are generally considered safe and well tolerated, more serious adverse events have been reported with their long-term use. This includes In response to the low acidity caused by PPIs, there is an increased production of the hormone gastrin which stimulates the pyridal cells to secrete acid. The high levels of gastrin leads to increased proliferation and hyperplasia of enterochromophen-like cells raising a concern that this could lead to gastric carcinoids or cancer. However, it was found that no cancerous or malignant changes arose from this in humans, only in rat models to date. No direct evidence of PPIs causing increased risk of gastric cancer or carcinoids in any non-rat species has been found. Bacterial enteritis and other infections are a theoretical risk of long-term PPI use. It has been found that the use of PPIs is associated with Clostridium difficile infection particularly. However, evidence is conflicting. There has also been a link drawn between PPI use and higher incidence of community-acquired pneumonia, though again, a direct causal link cannot be fully established with current evidence available. Dietary calcium, magnesium and B12 all depend on gastric acid for their absorption. Theoretically, lower acidity of the stomach could lead to decreased absorption of these macronutrients. However, evidence for this has been conflicting. Importantly, long-term PPI use has been associated with increased risk of osteoporotic fractures, but more recently results have come forward disputing this association. Nevertheless, in 2010, the FDA revised the labelling of all PPIs to include the increased risk of fractures of the hip, wrist and spine. It has been speculated that the increased risk of fractures may be due to the reduced absorption of dietary calcium. As mentioned earlier, much of the evidence for the adverse effects described has been from small observational studies, so a direct causal link can't be made. Furthermore, much of the evidence has been conflicting, meaning there's clearly a need for more randomised controlled trials. However, this isn't always possible or practical. Perhaps the more important question is whether people need to be taking these drugs at all. PPIs offer an easy and relatively quick solution to reflux symptoms. Along with this, their ease of access and the reoccurring nature of reflux disease often means that people are on these drugs for extended periods of time. This leads to a concern that people may be turning to these drugs without having first tried other interventions. 
For instance, lifestyle modifications such as improving your diet, quitting smoking and losing weight have all been shown to help manage reflux symptoms. By taking these drugs, we may be allowing people to continue with unhealthy lifestyles, often causing a range of other health problems on top of their reflux disease. Overall, even drugs with a good safety profile can be associated with adverse effects, especially when used for such long periods of time by such a large amount of people. Whether these concerns outweigh the benefits of the drug is uncertain. However, it can be said that the long-term use of PPIs should only occur when absolutely necessary. Reducing the overuse of these drugs will lower both the frequency of rare adverse effects as well as the cost to both the individual and the community.